Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, translated with commentary by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. Adi Lila, Chapter 7 Lord Chaitanya in Five Features, Text 118. Besides the inferior nature, O mighty armed Arjuna, there is a superior energy of mind which is all living entities who are struggling with material nature and are sustaining the universe. Purport In Bhagavad Gita, it is explained that the five elements, earth, water, fire, air, and ether, constitute the gross energy of the Absolute Truth and that there are also three subtle energies, namely the mind, intelligence, and false ego, or identification with the phenomenal world. Thus, the entire cosmic manifestation is divided into eight energies, all of which are inferior. As explained in Bhagavad Gita, Mamamaya Duratyaya, the inferior energy, known as maya, is so strong that although the living entity does not belong to this energy, due to the superior strength of the inferior energy, the living entity, Jiva Bhuta, forgets his real position and identifies with it. Krishna says distinctly, that beyond the material energy there is a superior energy, which is known as the Jiva Bhuta, or living entities. When in contact with the material energy, this superior energy conducts all the activities of the entire material phenomenal world. The supreme cause is Krishna, Janmad Yasyayata, who is the origin of all energies which work variously. The Supreme Personality of Godhead has both inferior and superior energies, and the difference between them is that the superior energy is factual, whereas the inferior energy is a reflection of the superior. A reflection of the sun in a mirror or on water appears to be the sun but it is not. Similarly, the material world is but a reflection of the spiritual world. Although it appears to be factual, it is not. It is only a temporary reflection, whereas the spiritual world is factual reality. The material world, with its gross and subtle forms, is merely a reflection of the spiritual world. The living entity is not a product of the material energy. He is spiritual energy, but in contact with matter, he forgets his identity. Thus, the living entity identifies himself with matter and enthusiastically engages in material activities in the guises of a technologist, scientist, philosopher, etc. He does not know that he is not at all a material product, but is spiritual. His real identity thus being lost, he struggles very hard in the material world. And the Hare Krishna movement, or Krishna consciousness movement, tries to revive his original consciousness. His activities in manufacturing big skyscrapers are evidence of his intelligence. But this kind of intelligence is not at all advanced. One should know that his only real concern is how to get free from material contact. For by absorbing his mind in material activities, he takes material bodies again and again, although he falsely claims to be very intelligent. In material consciousness, he is not at all intelligent. 
When we speak about the Krishna consciousness movement, which is meant to make people intelligent, the conditioned living entity therefore misunderstands it. He is so engrossed in the material concept of life that he does not think that there can be any activities which are actually based on intelligence beyond the construction of skyscrapers and big roads and manufacturing of cars. This is proof of mayaya pritagyana, or loss of all intelligence due to the influence of maya. When a living entity is freed from such misconceptions, he is called liberated. When one is actually liberated, he no longer identifies with the material world. The symptom of mukti, liberation, is that one engages in spiritual activities instead of falsely engaging in material activities. Transcendental, loving, devotional service is the spiritual activity of the spirit soul. Mayavadi philosophers confuse such spiritual activity with material activity. But Bhagavad Gita confirms, Mam chayo viabhicharina bhakti yogena sevate sagunan samatityaitan brahma buyaya kalpate. Bhagavad Gita 1426. One who engages in the spiritual activities of unalloyed devotional service, Ava Bacharini Bhakti, is immediately elevated to the transcendental platform, and he is to be considered Brahma Bhutta, which indicates that he is no longer in the material world, but in the spiritual world. Devotional service is enlightenment or awakening. When the living entity perfectly performs spiritual activities under the direction of the spiritual master, he becomes perfect in knowledge and understands that he is not God, but a servant of God. As explained by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Jivara Swarupai Krishnara Nichitas, the real identity of the living entity is that he is an eternal servant of the Supreme. Chaitanya Charitamrita Maji 20108 As long as one does not come to this conclusion, he must be in ignorance. This is also confirmed by the Lord in Bhagavad Gita 719. Bahunam Janmanamante Gyanavamam Papadyate Translation after many births of struggling for existence and cultivating knowledge, when one comes to the point of real knowledge, he surrenders unto me. End translation. Such an advanced Mahatma or great soul is very rarely to be seen. Thus, although the Mayavad philosophers appear to be very advanced in knowledge, they are not yet perfect. To come to the point of perfection, they must voluntarily surrender to Krishna. Text 119 The potency of Lord Vishnu is summarized in three categories, namely the spiritual potency, the living entities, and ignorance. The spiritual potency is full of knowledge. The living entities, although belonging to the spiritual potency, are subject to bewilderment. And the third energy, which is full of ignorance, is always visible in fruit of activities. Purport In the previous verse, quoted from Bhagavad Gita, it has been established that the living entities are to be categorized among the Lord's potencies. The Lord is potent, and there are varieties of potencies. Parasya Shaktir Vividhaya Shriyate. Now, in this quotation from the Vishnu Purana, this is further confirmed. There are varieties of potencies, 
and they have been divided into three categories. Namely, spiritual, marginal, and external. The spiritual potency is manifested in the spiritual world. Krishna's form, qualities, activities, and entourage are all spiritual. This is also confirmed in Bhagavad Gita. Ajo Pishan Avyayatma Bhutanam Ishvaro Pishan Prakriti Svamadistaya Sambhavam Yatma Mayaya Translation Although I am unborn, and my transcendental body never deteriorates, and although I am the Lord of all sentient beings, I still appear in every millennium in my original transcendental form. In translation, Bhagavad Gita 4.6 Atma Maya refers to the spiritual potency. When Krishna comes to this or any other universe, he does so with his spiritual potency. We take birth by the force of the material potency, but as stated here with reference to the Vishnu Purana, the Chaitragna, or living entity, belongs to the spiritual potency. Thus, when we free ourselves from the clutches of the material potency, we can also enter the spiritual world. The material potency is the energy of darkness or complete ignorance of spiritual activities. In the material potency, the living entity engages himself in fruitive activities, thinking that he can be happy through expansion in terms of material energy. This fact is prominently manifested in this age of Kali, because human society, not understanding the spiritual nature, is busily expanding in material activities. The men of the present day are almost unaware of their spiritual identity. They think that they are products of the elements of the material world and that everything will end with the annihilation of the body. Therefore, they conclude that as long as one has a material body consisting of material senses, one should enjoy the senses as much as possible. Since they are atheists, they do not care whether there is a next life. Such activities are described in this verse as avidya karma samnaya. The material world is separated from the spiritual energy of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Thus, although it is originally created by the Supreme Lord, he is not actually present within it. The Lord also confirms in Bhagavad Gita, Matstani Sarvabhutani. Translation. Everything is resting on me. End translation. Bhagavad Gita 9.4. This indicates that everything is resting on his own energy. For example, the planets are resting within outer space, which is the separated energy of Krishna. The Lord explains in Bhagavad Gita, Bumir apo nalo vayu, kam mano buddha evacha, ahankara itiyame bina prakritir astada. Translation. Earth, water, fire, air, ether, mind, intelligence, and false ego. Altogether, these eight comprise my separated energies. End translation. Bhagavad Gita 7.4 The separated energy acts as if it were independent. But here it is said that although such energies are certainly factual, they are not independent, but merely separated. The separated energy can be understood from a practical example. I compose books by speaking into a dictaphone, and when the dictaphone is replayed, it appears that I am speaking personally. But actually, I am not. 
I spoke personally, but then the dictaphone tape, which is separate from me, acts exactly like me. Similarly, the material energy originally emanates from the Supreme Personality of Godhead, but it acts separately, although the energy is supplied by the Lord. This is also explained in Bhagavad Gita. Mayad Yakshena Prakriti Suyate Satcharacharam Translation This material world is working under my direction, O son of Kunti, and it is producing all moving and unmoving beings. End translation. Bhagavad Gita 9.10 Under the guidance or superintendence of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the material energy works as if independent, although it is not actually independent. In this verse from Vishnu Purana, the total energy of the Supreme Personality of Godhead is classified in three divisions. Namely, the spiritual or internal potency of the Lord, the marginal potency or Chaitragna, living entity, and the material potency, which is separated from the Supreme Personality of Godhead and appears to act independently. When Srila Vyasadev, by meditation and self realization, saw the Supreme Personality of Godhead, he also saw the separated energy of the Lord standing behind him. There's a Sanskrit verse here. Vyasadeva also realized that it is this separated energy of the Lord, the material energy, that covers the knowledge of the living entities. There's another Sanskrit verse here. The separated material energy bewilders the living entities jivas, and thus they work very hard under its influence, not knowing that they are not fulfilling their mission in life. Unfortunately, most of them think that they are the body and should therefore enjoy the material senses irresponsibly, since when death comes, everything will be finished. The atheistic philosophy also flourished in India, when it was sometimes propagated by Charvaka Muni, who said, there's a Sanskrit verse here. His theory was that as long as one lives, one should eat as much ghee as possible. In India, ghee, clarified butter, is a basic ingredient in preparing many varieties of foodstuffs. Since everyone wants to enjoy nice food, Charvaka Muni advised that one eat as much ghee as possible. One may say, I have no money. How shall I purchase ghee? Trevaka Muni, however, says, quote, If you have no money, then beg, borrow, or steal, but in some way secure ghee and enjoy life. End quote. For one who further objects that he will be held accountable for such unauthorized activities as begging, borrowing, and stealing, Charvaka Muni replies, quote, You will not be held responsible. As soon as your body is burnt to ashes after death, everything is finished. End quote. This is called ignorance. From Bhagavad Gita, it is understood that one does not die with the annihilation of his body. The annihilation of one body involves changing to another. Therefore, to perform irresponsible activities in the material world is very dangerous. Without knowledge of the spirit soul and its transmigration, people are allured by the material energy to engage in many such activities as if one could become happy simply by dint of material knowledge, without reference to spiritual existence. Therefore, the entire material world and its activities are referred to as avidya-karma samnaya.
in order to dissipate the ignorance of the human beings who work under the material energy, which is separated from the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The Lord comes down to revive their original nature of spiritual activities. Yada yada hi dharmasya, glarnir bhavati bharata. As soon as they deviate from their original nature, the Lord comes to teach them. Sarvadharman parichacha, mamikam saranam vracha. Translation. My dear living entities, give up all material activities and simply surrender unto me for protection. End translation. Bhagavad Gita 1866. It is the statement of Travarka Muni that one should beg, borrow, or steal money to purchase ghee and enjoy life. There's a Sanskrit verse here. Thus, even the greatest atheist of India recommends that one eat ghee, not meat. No one could conceive of human beings eating meat like tigers and dogs. But men have become so degraded that they are just like animals and can no longer claim to have a human civilization. <laughs>